What's up, good people of the internets? What are you up to today? I'm here to tell you that I noticed something just now, just like right this second, just two seconds before I hopped on here. Well, it was between the time that I started playing with my eye makeup and then ending up in this like 80s throwback situation. It was somewhere in that time period that I really realized something. I realized that we're so fucking limited and we're not limited by what we're capable of. We're not limited because we don't know enough. We're not limited in life because we don't like have the skills. We, we're not limited in life because we're not creative enough. We're not limited in life by any of those things. We don't have a lack of any kind at all. We just don't. Our, anything that is lacking is not what is holding us back. What is holding us back, what is limiting us, are all the fucking things that are in the way of us just being self-expressed. Like, let's just take this outfit for example, right? I mean, yeah, it's a little, it's an 80s throwback, right? My hair is half up, my earrings are big, my makeup is loud, my sweater is bright, all the things, right? Now, if I walked outside like this, went to Whole Foods, like it, definitely people would look. Like, it'd be like, hmm you doing in Whole Foods looking like that the thing is like really that's how fucking lame we are that's how vanilla and plain we are that's how homogenous we have become that we can't even like step out just a little without it being stepping out why is the lane of our life so narrow why why are we confining ourselves like this because what happens is that we just gain all these little tiny blocks all these little well can't do that oh can't do that oh someone yelled at me once for that oh someone looked at me funny then oh somebody said something there and then we just limit and we 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 limit what's possible for us now not really not in any real sense but it doesn't really matter if it's real or it's really fucking real when you limit yourself because there's no one who can step in and change that for you not like you're not a marionette doll right but that's why learning on the internet is kind of not addressing the problem. Like the internet is an amazing tool, of course. Like what the fuck, it does everything. It's like, it's our world now, right? It's our entire world. Hey Jennifer, Debbie, Molly, how are you? Hey Debbie, I, 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 it doesn't surprise me that you like the pink. I, I vibe with you liking the pink, I can see that. I'm excited to see you soon. Um, so, the thing is that we're limited in life, not by what we don't know, or not by what we, you know, don't have, or not by where we're not creative enough, or, you know, <laughs> this is one of those things that people have been telling me, success, like my mentors and the people that ha have been like training under and learning from, this is something that they have been telling me for a long time. And I had to like see it for myself about in s about six different areas before I'm finally like, it's, it's now absorbed into my cells. Like there is not anything to do. It's just like that Rumi quote, you know, love, it's not, it's not like a, your life is not a search for love or a sort of search for how to express love. It's simply like a search for all of the blocks that stand between you and the expression of love that you are. So, the, but the thing is, it's not just about, it's, I mean, you are only love, really. So it, it kind of is about love only, but it's also, it's about everything in our life. It's about everything in your self-expression. It's about everything in your relationships. It's about everything in your career. It's about everything in your purpose work and all of it, like in your art, in your, in your passions. It's not that you don't have, there's nothing that you are lacking. And you go around filling yourself up with more shit. But do you know what the problem with filling yourself up with more shit is? You go and you learn more things. You, 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 you hear more people say the same thing over and over again. You go and you like, oh, you, you want to do, you know, the next, <clears throat> I don't know what the fuck you're learning out there. You're learning a lot of stuff though. And you learn the thing, right? But do you know what the problem is? The problem was, it was not, that was not the fucking problem in the first place. The problem was not that you did not know how to do this thing you're pretending like you don't know how to do. The problem was always and is that you have a block around it, that something has limited your view of what's possible. Something has limited your, like, you know, your range. Our range is so fucking small. Why? Why is our range so small? Why are we constantly limiting our range of expression of what's, normal i mean i'm not interested in being normal but also like we could give 
all of each other a little leeway to be a little more self-expressed, to not have it be a big deal, right? I mean, I just always think about like the range of, of, of allowable actions in our society in general is already so small. Like think about the tiny little ways. For instance, I do, you know, I, I do yoga. I could go, if I did a handstand or a headstand in Whole Foods, it would cause a problem. The, it just would, like it's, it would, I mean, maybe in Whole Foods it would be like, well, <laughs> just let her go. But in general, in society, like, I mean, even Kelly and I, we found as we got fitter and fitter, we would go, when we were traveling, we travel so fast because we don't wanna waste time fucking around, you know, spending four hours walking through an airport when we can like jog through an airport. We can get some exercise. Well, guess what? You're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to move your body in very many ways. It's like there's actually only one or two ways that you're actually allowed to move your body in society. And as soon as you creep up on anything beyond that, you freak people out. And, and I, it's not like I'm immune. I'm freaked. If someone runs up behind me out in public, yeah, I'm going to be like, what, what the fuck's that guy doing? Like, what's up? What's going on? Right? But this is all conditioning. This is all in the problem with you going out and trying to learn more shit to actually do the thing that you know that there is to do. The problem with you going and just learning and learning and learning and thinking that you need new skills and hey, Shannon, <clears throat> hey, everyone, hey, hey, hi there. So um, the, the, the problem with going and learning new skills, hey, Michelle, is that you, when you learn the new skills, the skills don't come free. The skills don't come with no baggage. When you go and let's say you go take a class on, I don't know, painting, but let's say that like you have a pretty good idea how to paint. Let's also say that you haven't really tried painting. So you're not really taking a class to learn how to paint. You're taking a class to like, hopefully maybe get you off your ass in order to paint, right? But here's the problem, here's the rub. Because the, the issue is usually not in the first place, unless you're just brand, literally brand new to something. The issue is not that you didn't know how to do it. Mostly you learn by doing anyway. So, I mean, you wouldn't even know if you knew how to do it if you hadn't tried doing it. And then you go and you learn this, whatever you learn, you know, how to paint 101. Well, guess what that comes with? That comes with a whole bunch of limitations, a whole bunch of don't do it this way, a whole bunch of things that limit your range. And then that's just more blocks that are in your way when removing the blocks was the only thing you ever needed in the first place. Removing whatever stands between you and taking the action that you know to take, that's the only thing that you ever needed to address in the first instance. But instead of addressing that, instead of removing the blocks, you decided to add some more. And you wonder why your life is just a constant like uncovering of, wow, why the fuck is that stopping me? And why do I have resistance around this? And what is going on? Well, because these things are subtle, right? There, we're, we are subtle humans. Like we are subtle creatures. We pick up on the smallest interpersonal communications and half the time, 99, way more than half the time, a lot of the time, we misunderstand them, but we're pretty damn sure that we're right about what we interpreted. And then we use that as another limitation that we put on ourselves. We limit our range even more. Like it's absurd the way that you can and cannot behave in society. And so of course, like there should be rules, right? I'm not saying we should all just run around like fucking crazy people. And it's, it's maybe not even the problem that we are, that we have certain like social norms, right? Social norms are good. I mean, they keep us from like just being crazy, rabid assholes, right? But I think the real issue is that we don't see them for what they are. We don't even acknowledge that that is why we are acting a certain way. That is why we only see this range of possible actions because we apply that, we, we like, we overextend the paradigm and we think, well, then I can't step out of line in this way. I can't do what I really wanna do here. I can't wear this hot pink sweater and crazy earrings and fun hair and crazy eye makeup because I don't know, then so, you, I'm sure as shit someone out there thinks I'm weird. If you don't, then I've really fundamentally failed. So please just pretend, just go along with it, right? So the thing is, Cleopatra, thanks. see, it's good, it's Cleopatra. So the thing is that it's like, it's, it's outside the normal range and the normal range is very fucking small. 
the normal range is very tight. And the only thing that there ever is to do, <clears throat> excuse me, in getting out of the normal range is not like, oh, how do I do it? Like, I don't know how to do, I don't know how to be self-expressed. Maybe I should take a course on self-expression. No, I think what you should take a course on is how the fuck do you see and remove the blocks between you and your self-expression? The thing is that you're just fully capable and all this bullshit, all this like nah, meh, 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 about how you're not, about how you're not good enough. Look, I'm not saying don't learn shit. I mean, I, I, I love learning. I've been like, I went to regular school, then I went to college, then I went to graduate school, then I went to law school and I loved every fucking bit of it. Like this is not an anti-education tirade by any means. The thing is just know that when you're a grown ass human who actually has skills and you actually know what to do. And then instead of doing that, it, you'd go and you try to learn more thinking that somehow you can actually learn without doing yet so that you don't fuck it up. Yeah. See, being seen and not liked limits your self-expression. I mean, that's got to be pretty universal. I remember the, I've unfriended a lot of people lately because they just are like saying things like that I just flat out am quite sure that I'm never going to agree with. And the way that they're presenting their position is not open for discussion. It's not loving. It's just kind of like, I don't know. It's been weird. Like I don't ever, I almost never, everyone says Facebook's in a negative place. I almost never experience it. But the last few days I've like gotten the opportunity to clean out my friends list a little bit. And I like was thinking, thank you to those people for expressing themselves in a way that disgusted me or that I was really like, no. But the thing was, it gave me the opportunity to say, no, thank you. And it actually didn't have anything to do with that person. I mean, yes and no, right? It's like my judgment about them doesn't fucking mean anything, really. Like my, I'm allowed to, to have a judgment about that and say, no, I don't want that in my life. And then maybe they have the same judgment about me and I so don't care. Like, but I do, but that's the weird part, right? Someone, I forget what this situation was the other day. Just the other day, like, Someone who's, who was just like completely, oh, I wish I could remember the specifics. It's going to come back to me, but it was like somebody completely not aligned, right? Just like a human who has like no, nothing, no alignment, uh, with me and my message. And they were like kind of being like judgy. I mean, this has happened a lot, right? I've had a lot of people say a lot of weird, not nice shit to me. And I frankly try I try because I try to be self-expressed enough sufficient that it will actually allow people to make a choice to stay or go to actually know that they have a choice to actually be able to learn to express their own desires to actually be able to opt in or opt out of life in whatever is showing up in their world. But it was like, you know, the, someone will say something who is really not your person, who's really not someone that you would, if, if it was just, you were given a list of people who's, of, about whose opinions, like you'd have to rank how much you cared. You'd be like, they'd be a zero until they say something nasty about you. And then it's kind of like, wait, but I don't actually want that person to not like me. I mean, it doesn't feel good to not be liked. It doesn't feel good to not be liked even by people that you don't fucking like which is just human nature. It's just how it is, right? And it's just one of those things that you get to push the boundaries with. Because if you abide by your desire not to be not liked, like your fear of being not liked, and you combine that with society's just narrow, narrow, narrow range of what's allowable, what's possible, what's normal, what's okay for self-expression, well, then you just end up being a normal fucking person and I don't think any of you here are up to being a normal fucking person because if you were, you probably would have stopped watching this live stream when you saw what I was wearing. Not because what I'm wearing is so fucking crazy. I, I mean, I've, got, I've gotten crazier. I could get, a, this is nothing, right? But it's also for some people, something. For some people, it's way too much. 
good. Like that's the point. But the point is really that you have to constantly press your comfort zone on this. If you do not, you will just continue to accrete all of this bullshit that is just going to like, it's just between you and the world. And what the fuck are you doing out there just waiting until what? Everybody loves you? You you, you aren't even showing yourself. How can it, you're, it's just like the person who's painting and then they're like, well, I gotta get like, I gotta get, you know, I gotta learn more. Like Martin said, because it's, it's easier to think that you don't know what to do than it is to admit that you're fucking scared to do it. And then you, you but it's the same way. It's like, well, I want to be liked and I somehow want to be liked before I'm willing to put myself out there to be liked or hated or not either. Right. And that's not the way that it works. It's not. Debbie wants to go dancing Kroger <laughs> or something else that will make people look at her and go, what the hell is she doing? And yes, that is the thing. It is so easy. Like don't, that we, we could all do it the next time that we stepped outside of our house, right? Like you do the, just here's the, here's the fun thing, right? This really is fun. Just pay attention to the limitations to the ways in which you complete, almost until now, completely unconsciously, and with v great facility, you limit your range of behavior. Just think about how far you can raise your hands up in public until it gets weird. It's like, mm, it's like here maybe. You just start raising your hands up in public and it gets weird really fucking fast, which is so fucking weird. Why, why would it be weird to raise your hands up in public? Like what? I mean, right? It's like, so this is, the, this, is the, this is the challenge. All of us, tomorrow, when we go out into the world, we're going to one, pay attention to, holy shit, I just realized, because you're so good at it, you don't even know you're doing it, but you are modulating and restraining and constraining your self-expression in almost every moment of your life when there's another human being around to a certain degree with your family, to another degree with people that you know, to another degree you're really constrained with people that you don't know. And you do it just like flawlessly, seamlessly, right? For you, there it's a almost seamless interaction so long as you actually have a place to be self-expressed, right? But the thing is, you, 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 you're still doing it. It doesn't matter that you're not present to it. Well, it matters. It matters in the sense that it's real hard to actually see who you really are until you at least get clear on, wow, uh, this is, unless I just so happen to be a person whose self-expression falls within this range, and I actually am pretty fucking positive that no human being is born that way, that you are actually way out here and you're constraining and you're doing it like, 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 like you have no idea that you're doing it and you're masterful at it and it's kind of killing you just slowly. I mean, not like, it's not like rapid. It's just like a little bit of soul death every day, which look, we're strong fucking creatures. We can tolerate that, but it does have an impact. It does have an impact on your energy levels. You know how hard it is for you? I mean, for all of us, for me, for you, for humans, you know how hard it is on your soul to have yourself constrained like that? And then you're just walking around fucking completely oblivious. Your soul is like, um, help, I'm crying, I'm dying, hello, anyone? And you're just like, oh, what the fuck was that noise? What was that? That was, shh, I, we can't be making noise in public. That's, someone's gonna get offended, God. What was that? I'm so sorry that I just made that noise. I, I didn't mean to. And your soul then just learns to shut the fuck up and not even communicate that it's dying in there because you're so goddamn limited. Because why? Because have you ever been impressed with someone's ability to uh, restrain their behavior and be completely compliant with societal norms and to reduce themselves to the lowest common tolerable denominator for society. No, you've never been impressed with anyone doing that. I promise. But what have you been impressed with? What have you taken notice of? What have you been even jealous of? What have you been like envious of? Maybe when people are fully self-expressed. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Kelly and I were just watching the guy who watches like people make cornbread on TV. Have you seen this guy? I think it's O.M. Kalen. And he's just this amazing black guy who watches 
mainly white people cook things and he makes a lot of, you know, societal commentary about it. But he's just so self-expressed that it's so real. It's so identifiable. It's like, oh yes, like that is what your soul wants. Your soul wants to be self-expressed. It wants to be expressed. Just that, that's what it, like it doesn't even, it's like antithetical to soul to have it exist and not be in the world. It's not, it's home is not in your head. That's just where it, it has to start out. It's like, it's, you're just a little vehicle for, right? For, and then, and then all you're doing is you're like, whoop, shutting the doors, locking things down, making sure that nobody's arms, all your arms and legs are in the vehicle and nobody is doing anything weird. And everybody just buckle up and look straight forward and don't move and don't look funny at anyone and don't turn on the radio because that might have, right? And that's not really what we're here for. Why would you be here for that? Why would that be why you are here on earth? Like literally, like just think about it for two seconds, maybe even 20 seconds, maybe even two days, I don't know, maybe the rest of your fucking life. Why would you be here in this crazy fucking experience called human life to just what, fly under the radar? Is that your big fucking goal to fly under the radar, to not disturb anyone else? What, what, how could we have gotten to a place where that is basically what a lot of us do for a lot of our lives is we try really hard not to upset the apple cart or anyone else or anything else or make anyone look at us funny or have any reaction to anything that we're doing or like how could we possibly camouflage ourselves more how could we make ourselves smaller and less than and just less 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 and restrained and constricted and and just how can we operate in this range that is this big that society finds completely i don't know fucking just inconsequential because you're flying under the radar. I'm so sure that's not your your goal in life. I'm so sure that at the end of your life, you're not going to say, wow, thank God I never offended anyone in a grocery store by doing something weird. Because you know what, you're not even offending people. All if you're doing anything, you're just like, they're just confused, right? No, you cannot make a difference flying under the radar either. You cannot make a difference without making a difference, which means in, in let's translate, which means upsetting something. Not like, not like upsetting, like, you know, maybe that too, but upsetting. Like think about like, there's a set, right? There's just like a, there's a set, there's a set standard. There's a set of like, uh, possible, okay things to do. You have to upset that. You have to up dump the apple cart, as they say. You have to turn things, or you have to actually make a difference to make a difference. <laughs> do you see? You don't have to, like, it's, you could conceive of it like you're upsetting people in a way that makes you feel like you're a terrible human, which is just weird anyway, because it's actually their, if you're not being, I mean, don't be an asshole, right? There's like, there's, there are basic, don't be an asshole, but you being self-expressed truly is always going to come back to love and connection and, and human like togetherness. Like that's just, that, that is what we are. And so any other kind of self-expression isn't actual self-expression. It's anger. It's acting out. It's like, there's those things and those things aren't, those things aren't compelling or like they don't inspire people, but you know what does inspire people? Seeing someone who just is rocking themselves outside the boundaries of the normal range of life. Out, just outside, just how far can you get outside, right? How far can you get outside and still communicate, still have people hear you? Well, I don't know, but that's what I'm exploring. But also maybe you could just explore recognizing that you're in this tiny little lane anyway that you didn't maybe even know you were in or recognize the depth of how much you were in it, how much it impacts you, that you try to constrain your self-expression, da, 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 da. My point is to fucking pay attention, to start doing things that actually upset the world, 
not upset like emotional like oh my god but like upset like change <laughs> do you think we could use a little change i feel like we could use a little change i feel like we could use a tiny bit of transformation in the world lately i feel like something's some things are going on that aren't really working for anyone and the way that it will change is when we all recognize that we have the ability we don't not only have the ability to make a difference we already have everything that we need and all that we have is all the blocks between us and taking that action so yeah get off your ass and do it as coach Hess, coach Hess 80 says that's pete pete i think that's pete um, but the thing is that you don't actually like, you have to smash those blocks. You have to, well, I mean, you don't have to do anything. You can sit on your ass at home. Co, co chess, co chess. It is beats. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and the thing is really like, first you pay attention to how, up leveling instead of upsetting yeah up leveling and let's do it like let's actually make a difference because right now flying under the radar just doing what is you know like just being so constrained in your own self is that really how you are here's one way that I this is one one reason I have to suspect that people are not self-expressed do you know how many people are obsessed with Halloween. Do you know that, like, uh, you obviously know that there's whole stores that just come into existence just for Halloween, just to sell people costumes and clothes and fun shit. Do you know, maybe, did you ever think about why people like Halloween? I mean, candy's pretty much going out of style, right? Can't we be doing that? Let's be doing the candy's going out of style thing. The thing is, adults don't really go, I don't think, for the candy, they don't dress up, they don't go to Halloween parties for the candy, presumably. Uh, but what I do think they go to Halloween parties for, what I do think people love wearing Halloween costumes for to work, and is because it's the one day of the year where we widen that range a little bit, right? It's the day of the year where we allow people to just have a little more latitude, and it's actually not that much more latitude if you really think about it. Like, <laughs> we watched the guy who talks about cornbread talk about a fashion show and like mind-blowing shit goes on at fashion shows but the thing is like you even on Halloween we widen that range a little bit so Debbie says being self-expressed in public gives access to others that it's okay to be who they are and that's absolutely it so why don't you help someone out? Why don't you actually show your self-expression? Just like 5% more tomorrow, maybe 5% more the day after, or fucking go for it. 50%, 500 exit. I don't, would do, do what you can with what you have where you are. Because that is the whole point, right? Darius hates Halloween. Darius, maybe you're part of the problem. <laughs> Why do you hate Halloween, Darius? No, Darius is a super self-expressed person, so this is interesting. But your self-expression doesn't have to be like weird costumes, right? It doesn't have to be, it's just like we could do, I don't wanna have Halloween every day. I, I don't even actually, to be honest, I don't hate Halloween for sure, but I don't like candy being given to all humans, all just like in mass quantities. And I don't actually like Halloween, I mean, it's just, oof. We have to sit in the dark on Halloween so that nobody rings our doorbell because I'm sure she's not giving kids candy. And I'm also not giving them like apples that are gonna have some listeria in them or something and then be, you know, like the terrible person on the neighborhood block. Anyway, I don't love Halloween either, but I think Halloween tells us some, the, the fact that people love Halloween tells us something about ourselves, about our society, about what's what we're allowed to do and how, look, I was I was a corporate lawyer. You think I don't know about contracted range? Like I couldn't, I couldn't have my side shave. I couldn't have, I had to grow my fucking hair out for my last trial that I did. Like my, I actually 
It's mind boggling to me that I agreed to it, but it was only because I had to get to Texas somehow to meet Kelly. But if some part of me knew that somehow, but if it hadn't been for that, I'm pretty sure I would have packed up and said, fuck off a bit before then. The thing is that like I actually had to grow. It was not okay that my hair, I wasn't like this. It wasn't like even uneven. It was just short. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, you know, that's, that's where, that's the world right now. And that's okay. And standards and norms are fine. We just need to be conscious of them so that they don't limit who we are inside. Like, so that they don't limit our self-expression when it's appropriate. I'm not saying go fucking scream and yell and just be, you know, we were behind this guy on the plane a couple years ago. And Yes, being more authentic leads to better self-expression. And the only thing that's in the way of being more authentic are these blocks that I'm talking about, are things, limitations that you put on yourself. You, you, authenticity is your natural state. Everything else is some learned bullshit, right? Darius is scared of the scary movies. I'm not a big fan of scary movies either, Darius. And neither am I a fan of scary costumes. I, I like to go to the costume shops to think about all the fun range extending clothes that I could wear. None of them involve scary masks or scary things. I, I can agree with you. Those can go to the wayside. Um, but we sat behind this guy in the plane like a couple years. I don't know where the fuck we were going, but we were going somewhere. We were in first class and the guy was sitting in front of us and oh my God, it was like out of a fucking movie how obnoxious this guy was. He was wasted even somehow when we got on the plane. He drank the whole time. He was a quintessential asshole to the flight attendant. He was loud as fuck. He was just going on and on. And there was, I, 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 I wrote about it at the time because I was like, it's interesting, right? Because you could say he was being self-expressed, but he was really just being an asshole. He was really just being like a, a cocksure jerk and, and, he, and he wasn't coming from love. He wasn't coming from anything like, you know, that. And he probably, what, what was real was that he wasn't being authentically self-expressed. Like you could tell where he was really covering up certain things. He was really, but he was loud and he was just disruptive and he was upsetting. And that is not what I'm talking about. And then I remember being on a, another flight later, like in a similar situation, but with someone on the plane who was just like, just effusive and they were maybe equally loud they were maybe equally like disruptive but the energy of it was so positive the whole vibe of it was just one of true self-expression and i know that you can tell the difference i know that you know the difference and all that there is to do is to set aside the the way of being like self-expressed that is just being a loud jerk right that's not your true self it's not, it's your fear, it's your, it's your something, it's your, you know, it's your insecurities, it's something being expressed, but it's not your true self. And then there is just to look and see like if your true, true self, if your actual authentic, who you really are, well, first you've got to do the work to fucking be always present to like, who is that? Cause that's just a constant discovery. And then express that, what does that, self desire what would you wear if you could what would you do if you could what would you you know how would you show up in the world if you weren't constrained and again the first step is just noticing the constraints that are there there is no way to uh fight a system that is invisible <laughs> there is only to see what is so and then look at ways to transform that so tomorrow you can go out with Debbie and dancing Kroger, or you can take the first step before that, which Debbie's already done because she's done a lot of this work. You can actually just be present to all the ways in which you're masterfully modulating every goddamn thing that you do and say and be and how you show up. And then you can just kind of like take it, just take one more step, just like one more step. Hey Andy, it's good to see you. Thank you. I'm glad you're here. Um, you guys, Michelle, everyone, hi Pete, hi all of you. Thanks for hopping on. I will 
Oh, by the way, this is day three of eye makeup. If we don't know, I'm learning eye makeup. Not because I give a fuck about makeup, actually, but because I like learning new things. I like learning how to learn. I like seeing what happens when I try to do something that I'm not good at. And one day, two days ago, I was really not good at this. Yesterday got better. I did actually have to go learn something because I actually didn't know how to do the thing, but I only watched like one video before I tried it myself. And then all oh, this whole world of like, oh shit, I don't even know what I'm watching. Why am I out there? Why, why would I watch more videos when I'm just like, I don't even, I hadn't even tried. So it was like all just theoretical. And then this is day three. Day three has like a combination of some of day two's makeup. It's actually kind of like all blending together now. It's, it's lovely. And I've learned even more about how to make smoky eye. And I'm going to keep exploring it. Um, so the good thing is that then smoky eye led to like, oh, over the top makeup means like, wait, maybe over the top clothes. And then, yeah, well, there's just always to expand the next thing. And what's it gonna be for you? It might not be smoky eye. It doesn't have to be smoky eye. But you know, it can be something. It can be something that you love, that you share with someone that you haven't ever shared with them because you've been afraid of, that it was weird or that it would, that they, I don't know, that it didn't fit the, you know, mold. Well, good, because the mold is broken. Like the mold is not working. So we're going to have to try some other things. So. Thank you. I got it. I got a, I got a thumbs up from a, a cosmetologist. That's, that's, that's big props and blend, blend, blend. I know it's amazing. Well, and here's the other thing. It's just like Bob Ross. It's like, you have to do it backwards and it's so mind bending that you do the light layers first and you're just like, but wait, I don't want to, I don't know. Oh, Jennifer, you'd be so, uh, you'll be so great driving for Uber because, uh, you could just share yourself with so many cool people. We've had a lot of really self-expressed Uber drivers. I really appreciated that. All right, you guys, I will talk to you tomorrow. Mm, probably a little earlier because we're gonna be going to see Kelly's dad tomorrow night. You're a cosmetologist too. Oh no, you also complimented me but over on Instagram. I got a compliment, Jennifer, from a real cosmetologist. Unless... I'm pretty sure you're not a real cosmetologist. You just play one on TV, right, Jennifer? But Michelle is a real cosmetologist. Blend, blend, blend. I know, I, I, it's fun. It's just like all the different brushes, all the different things, all the different, like, so much. You guys, you can learn how to learn by learning anything. If you can apply it to any other area of your life. You're really a cosmetologist? I don't, I have all these cos, who knew? I'm surrounded by, I'm a surrounded by cosmetologists. I did not know that, Jennifer. Michelle has been, yeah. And Michelle and Jennifer also. And I've known Jennifer for how many years? And I never knew that. Anyone else out there, cosmetologists? I need to know. Like, you're gonna have to, you can come out, come out wherever you are. Because now I've got a whole, a whole raft of them. I'm glad to have you here to help me out. Uh, not doing any tutorials yet, but uh, I'm going to keep working on learning. So I love you guys. Go break the mold a little bit, okay? At least notice that it's there. Have a great day, night, all of it. Bring a little color to life. How about that?